Hi, I'm Ruby. This week I'm talking to Emily about her stress at work. Emily thinks she's got problems. You should think about my job. I mean, I have to sit here, I have to talk at the same time, and I have to look at that camera. Tell me about stress. It's quite common at work that uh, you have a client losing their temper with you. Raised voices, um, yeah, clients, clients calling up, getting really angry down the phone, being quite abusive. I think in those situations, I generally feel quite angry, frustrated because I, often my hands are tied. It's the kind of thing that you go to bed thinking about and you wake up thinking about what you wanted to say or couldn't say or did say and should have said. I think it lingers. If somebody's giving you their anger or their grief or whatever, it really isn't worth it for you to react. But that's how humans work. We work like neural Wi-Fi. So if I get stressed, you'll get stressed. There are tricks you can learn to do so that, you know, if somebody's really passing you their cortisol, you know, their adrenaline, it's human nature that we'll pick it and throw it right back. That's when we lock antlers at meetings. So it's to recognize it in yourself, to understand, oh, oh, I'm now a tipping point. And then to do certain exercises, you have to practice them to be able to bring down your own cortisol. And when yours is down, you'll affect the next guy. When you're really focused on something or paying attention, which is why I do mindfulness or what mindfulness does for me, which means that you're out of your head. You know, the critical voices, they're never going to go completely. The only time the voices are gone is when you're in a coma. So they're just quieter. If you're with somebody and they're giving you hell, this is what I do. I focus on, let's say, pick your thing, a left eyebrow. And I really start finding out how interesting it is. And so their voice is going, la, 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 la. It still looks like I'm listening. But if you really just start to notice it, your cortisol will come down. And remember to breathe. One of the main symptoms of rumination is when you can't sleep at night, obviously, because uh, your mind just is chewing and chewing. As a matter of fact, I think rumination means something like chewing the cud, thinking what you could have done, what you should have done, what you didn't do. These are things you can't answer. Like, we can answer why some of us E equals MC squared, but we'll never be able to answer those questions like, why didn't he call me? Why does everybody think I'm an idiot? Why am I so fat? Being able to distinguish, I need this thought. This one is just dross. It's just dross. It's keeping me up. So it's kind of picking and sorting what's useful and what's keeping you up. This is harder than you think, but then you can read my book and I'll explain how to do it.